Well folks, today is the day that I put these babies inside of that cart. So coming up, I'm going to be installing the Epoch batteries into this cart. First thing I need to do is I have to remove all of this stuff that I had put in here. I had a different idea for a battery, but now that I have the Epoch batteries, I don't need any of this stuff anymore. So first thing I'm going to do is remove all this Okay, I now have everything removed from the previous build that I was going to do underneath the seat here. i just like to show you all kind of everything that I've done. So basically what I've done is I put this piece of aluminum plate on here and screwed it on. And this is just going to give me a bit more of template to kind of install different items if I want to. Uh, over here I have a 30 amp 48 volt to 12 volt uh, converter. Now the Epoch kit came with a 25 amp, which is more than enough, but I already have this guy um, already uh, wired in, so I'm just going to continue to use this 30 amp. But the process is the same for installation. What I've done, I've done something a little different. Uh, this is the output wires. This is running out, and it's running underneath the cart to, un to behind the dash. So that's these two wires. And then I have this converter tied into a relay and what this relay does is I have it wired into the switch for the on off switch at the front of the cart with the key so when this switch is turned off this relay turns off which turns off all of my DC stuff so if I have something I want to keep running I'll just leave the key on but uh, if I turn the key off then it powers this down which then cuts all the 12 volt power. So next, I'm going to install the Epoch batteries into the cradle here. Now the way that I've run this is I have my positives on this side and my negatives on this side. I'm going to see how that fits and how it works out, but I'm thinking put more of the weight on this side of the cart because I'm mainly going to be the only person on here sitting on this side. So I'll put more of the battery weight over here. Okay, so I've come to a point here where I'm looking at where to mount this charger. And with this charger, I'm thinking I'm going to mount it over there with the fan facing away from the battery and that way it's going to be able to dissipate heat. The only problem is, is to fit inside the rail this way, uh, the base is too wide on it. So I'm thinking if I cut this little piece off and this little piece off, then it's going to be able to sit down inside the rail. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buzz this off here. Okay, now you can see that fits perfectly. I just cut that in there, cut a little off of this end, and now it fits perfectly down on top of the rail here. So I'll mount that on the other side of my batteries. Now I didn't put my uh, mic on, but this is the audio coming through the GoPro. But as you can see, there's no way that's coming out of there now. So that's the charger mounted. Now moving on, I'm going to put the batteries in and strap them down. All right, so. I've got a nice gap here between the batteries and the charger, and this is the back of the charger, so it doesn't heat up very much. The heat sink's on the front here. I have a gap here for the airflow, and then I have my batteries mounted in. So with these two straps, these batteries now are not going anywhere. And then also, look at all the room over here I have. So if I wanted to, I could almost fit another battery, maybe two, if I was to shift this down. But look at that. All right, wiring is gonna be next. I think I'm gonna mount the buzz bar up here. If you didn't have this extra piece of aluminum, this little piece of metal here would be perfect to mount that buzz bar and then just run all the wires over. So I'm gonna get to that now. Okay, just something quick I've noticed. So I'm installing my terminal blocks on this terminal block and this one here, you have to take all the bolts off and then remove the bus bar and grab a couple of these washers. And then the way you put the cable on is you put your cable and then you're gonna put a washer 
and then you're gonna put a bolt. And you're gonna wanna have the lug pushing up against the bar itself, and then that way you have the best connection. Positive wires run, and you can see here, they all go into the block. This is the cart positive, and then one, two, three positives on the bus bar. And all I did was lay them out nice and see what worked. And also the carrying strap handles, you don't have to do this, but I thought it was a neat idea, but just using a zip tie to hold these wires so that they're not bouncing around and rubbing on anything. I thought that was kind of a nice idea there. So next it's all the negatives into this power block over here. And then once these are connected, I'll be ready to take this for a drive. Okay, all my negatives are now hooked up and it looks sweet. So check this out. All the negatives. Also, I put in my charging terminal ring on the negative and then that one on the positive. That runs over, I'll show you that in a minute. But I have all my battery cables connected. Um, I went a little bit overboard on the zip ties. I've got this bundle zip tied and this bundle zip tied and then all zip tied on here just to make sure. Um, on my charger, so I had already installed, I used a bit of the old uh, ring here. Now you could drill out your own hole and install this and leave in the original, but I'm never gonna use the original again. So I've modified it to house this over top. And this is the plug here. So this is not the one that came with the kit. This was one that I had purchased and installed a while back, but it's gonna do the same thing as the one with the kit. And then, again, I went overboard with the zip ties, but I zip tied the cable, it plugs in here, and then it runs across the top. And runs across the top into here. I have my charger mounted here. The handle on the charger worked out perfectly um, to zip tie this extra access cable to. And then that runs up. I have it zip tied here. And then it runs over into the terminal block to power the positive and the negative. So later on, I'm starting to lose light, so I'm gonna do this another day, but I'm gonna finish wiring up my uh, buck converter here and that's gonna power all my lights and everything and all the accessories I have in the future as well as it's gonna power my marine deck that I have here. So this was another mod that I had done, but yeah, very cool. So now I'm gonna try turning all the batteries on. These batteries are out a little bit, they're not balanced, but because I have all the positives together and all the negatives, they're gonna balance each other off of each other. So we'll turn one on. Okay, we got a green light. We'll turn the second one. Oh, that's not the button. Turn the second one on. Now it might start flashing because it's gonna start sharing current. Yeah, you can see these two batteries are flashing because right now they're sharing current uh, to even out off of each other. And now I'm gonna turn on the final one. So as long as your batteries aren't fully discharged or fully charged, like if you have one that's fully charged and then you connect another one that's fully discharged, that's gonna be a lot of current sharing going on. These cables may not be able to handle it. So do not um, connect these if they're way out of balance. If you know this one's at 40 and this one's at 60, go ahead and connect them parallel, turn them on. Um, but if they're way out, you're gonna to wanna to charge them all up to roughly the same and then connect them. And then what's really cool is once you, once you actually um, top balance these, so once you put the charger on it and bring them up to full, they're all gonna come up to full together. If this one starts to get higher, it'll come to full and then it'll slowly stop charging and this one will start charging if it's lower. So once you put a charge, a full charge on this, it's all gonna just balance out by itself. So every time you charge your batteries, um, they're gonna balance off each other at the top end. So that's really neat about these lithium batteries as well. Um, next, I'm gonna plug in the communication cables between each battery. So I'm gonna turn them all off. 
and then I'm going to plug in the actual display that's going to give me my amp count and everything and uh, I want to check on that too so be right back and it is super simple to connect these all you do is unscrew the caps here and you can see down in here there's a little bump in there and it's also the same on this connector so it's only going to go on one way so all your pins are going to line up once you connect the two so here you go the end battery or the slave is going to have the resistor and then these two batteries are connected and then these two batteries and then at the very end you have your fuel gauge now that um, 48 volt to 12 volt buck converter that they include in the kit uh, the 12 volt side is what is going to power the gauge i just have a little 12 volt battery here to power it but you're going to want to connect your positive and negative for the fuel gauge which is this guy right here oh that's not showing up properly on camera in real life, it's not strobing like that. It's a solid. I'll have to see if I can pick it up on my other camera. But anyways, um, connect the 12 volt side to the gauge and then connect the connector into the last battery. And then now let's turn on all these batteries. Okay, so all the batteries are now on. Uh, all green lights, they're starting to flash, so they're fuel or they're um, sharing the current right now. And then uh, this fuel gauge here, God, I gotta see if the other camera will get that right. That's, that does not look right. It's not strobing in real life. But this fuel gauge, um, I actually purchased this case for it on Amazon. And what I had done was actually, it was hanging over about another two inches and I cut it back and kind of re-glued the back piece on and then left a little hole for the wire to come out. And that is gonna sit on the dash right there. I still need to route the wiring up underneath the cart, but this will give you an idea. So when I'm driving, I'll be able to look down at the fuel gauge. That sun's kind of ruining it. but. I can see it. So when I'm driving, it's gonna be there. So all I'll do is I'll put the sticky on here and this wire, I'll run it back in behind the cup holders here somewhere and tuck it in nicely. And then that way, while I'm driving, I can look down and see. And I believe this, uh, I believe this green light that's on there now, once the batteries start to discharge, that'll change colors to red. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see if my other camera no, my other camera's strobing. Not as bad, but that's not strobing in real life. It's a solid number. So, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for me today. I'm going to finish installing the fuel gauge and all that tomorrow. It's starting to get a little late. But, yeah, that's everything. That's the batteries in. Uh, let's try. Yep, there's the reverse. I, uh... I need to hook this up too. I bought this on AliExpress and it lights up. The circle ring here lights up blue and these all light up red. So I'm gonna wire this into the 12 volt as well. So I have reverse, neutral, and then drive. So another mod I did. But anyways, back to the batteries. That's what we're here for. Uh, yeah, so I'll come back tomorrow. Okay, so unfortunately, I just checked the weather forecast. My mic on? Yeah, my mic's on. And unfortunately, it looks like it's gonna rain for the next uh, few days. So I'm not gonna get to hooking up the 12 volt uh, portion of this battery in this video, but I'm, I'm going to revisit this uh, battery build again. Uh, I just want to be able to get this video out as far as the major portions of the build. So again, now don't mind this little guy here supplying my 12 volt power. We went through, we hooked up all the wires to the bus bars, and that all worked out perfect. So the only thing I have to do is connect the positives and negatives on this guy here and connect that from my gauge. Um, the only thing I will show you now is the charger. So all I have to do is plug in an extension cord. That's it. And you'll hear the fan come on in a second there. And that's the charger tucked away over here. There you go, you can hear the fan. 
And let's check the current. Okay, it's starting off at five. And then in a few minutes, it's gonna ramp right up to about 22. Oh, there we go. Okay, I gotta set my gauge a little higher. And there you go. We are charging with 22.6 amps, according to my clamp meter. So what I'm gonna do is, this is the initial charge. So I'm gonna let these batteries charge up to full, and then they're all gonna be 100% together. Then they're all gonna discharge together, and then next time I charge, it'll charge up. Um, I'm gonna go over in another video specific to this, but maintenance of these batteries. Uh, quick thing to go through, me personally, I'm gonna charge this up now, and then I'm gonna take it out and drive it. Um, I'm hopefully gonna drive it below 50%, and then if I'm at 50% and I don't plan on driving it for a month or whatever, or weeks, I'll leave it at 50%. All I'll do is, on the power cord N, I'll put a smart plug onto Wi-Fi, and then if I wanna drive it, you know, let's say a couple hours before I wanna drive it, I'll turn on the charger via Wi-Fi, and that'll charge all the batteries up to full, and then that way I can drive them. Because with lithium iron phosphate, you don't wanna peak them at 100% and leave it there all the time. What you wanna do is you wanna try and leave it around 50% whenever you're storing it. So if you're you know, up at a park or something, and you're not gonna drive it till the next long weekend, ride it around until this fuel gauge here, I know it's strobing on camera and you can see the amps going in, but when that fuel gauge there says 100%, uh, drive her until she's about 50 and then park it for however many weeks. And that is gonna increase the longevity of these batteries. So just a, just a quick tip. Okay, um, I know uh, I didn't get to the 12 volt portion of this, but I will in another video. So thank you for watching and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.